All right, this is going to be try number two at lesson number four on uh, Java for Beginners uh, and you read it module 227. Um, last episode I was unpleasantly interrupted by messages on Steam. Um, it was unfortunate because I had sent somebody a message on Steam about 15 hours before and they replied to it in like, the first three minutes of me making a video and it threw off my rhythm. But today we're going to be talking a little bit about compiler errors. And I want to let you guys know that every programmer, even the best programmers on the planet, make mistakes. I mean, hell, some of them even make simple mistakes. Uh, we leave out semicolons, we drop brackets, we forget scopes, we don't include libraries. Um, just the other day I was showing my friend how to program uh, vectors when I was on Skype with her. And, you know, I'm like, oh, so we're going to include, you know, this, 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 and this, you know, while doing C++. And I totally forgot to include the thing I was showing her how to use. So, believe me, it happens to the best of us. We we all have our uh, our moments when programming. But what I wanted to show you guys is how we can kind of handle that and how we can kind of recover ourselves. Now, I know that you guys all know that if we, we need, I've, I've said in the past, we need semicolons at the end of lines, like this important line. If we don't have a semicolon there and we go to build this, the compiler will not compile it. It's going to tell us that we have one error and then it's going to say, this line right before uh, the error message, or well, these two lines, that this file, um, jtutorial1.java, uh, colon 6, semicolon, expected. So if I click on this, it's actually a hyperlink, it will highlight this line, and it will move my cursor to where it thinks it should be. So if I kind of click here, it moves my cursor there and it says semicolon expected. So if I put in a semicolon that just goes and fixes things. Now that's a good and a bad thing. Um, it's good because in this case that is where the problem lied. But that's a very simple problem. Um, as we progress further into our lessons our problems aren't going to be that easy to pin down. There will be times when a program will run perfectly and there's going to be, you know, problems. There's going to be incorrect calculations. There's going to be, you know, just difficult things uh, to pin down, which gives me an opportunity to introduce the two different types of problems. There are logic errors. And then there are code errors. And let me explain the two. Now, remember last lesson, we used that formula, um, I equals PRT. Um, I suppose I should toss multiplication signs in there since that's the way I presented it. And that was interest equals principal times rate times time. So, you know, very simple interest formula. Now, what would happen if you had the entire program just completely programmed as it should be? Except for when you got to the formula to set interest, you did something like this. Let's say int interest equals p multiplied by, wait, p multiplied by r divided by t. And then you had a semicolon at the end. That is a correct assignment. That is not a problem with your code. And it will compile. You'll just get a wrong answer. That's what's known as a logic error. Logic errors are when your code works, but the thought that created them was flawed. 
And that's kind of important to keep in mind. It's not necessarily that you're totally wrong. In this case, you're off by one character. Change the division sign to a multiplication sign. And you're still correct. So, um, when you think about, you know, how logic errors work, it's, it's, re it's truly difficult to understand uh, where they happen until when you look over your own code thoroughly, line by line, um, which is actually going to lead me into something else in a couple of minutes. So code errors, on the other hand, and these, you'll have a lot of them as you're starting out. You're going to make mistakes. That's that's honestly just how programming is. Until you understand the syntax, you understand, you know, semicolons come at the end of lines, you know, brackets encapsulate things. You're going to make a lot of errors. You're going to screw up scopes. You're going to drop semicolons. You're going to use variables by the wrong name. You're going to have lots of problems. But those can be anything. Those can be syntax... Um, incorrect naming, um, invalid calls, um, calling from bad locations. We'll get into that way later. And, you know, just there's a lot of different ways to make a code error. So what I want to show you guys now is, uh, a quick little way for you in the future to be able to look through your program sort of line by line and see what it's doing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a program. Um, I already have my mystical four lines here. You're going to see these in every program for me. And the reason why is because I actually don't know this line off the top of my head. It's kind of pathetic. But I've been using it templated for so long that I just always forget the the uh, the exact syntax of it. So what we're going to have is two integers in this case. So let's say int i, and uh, we'll set that equal to zero, and int j, and we'll set that equal to zero as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set i. And we're going to set it equal to 2 multiplied by uh, 6 minus 2 plus 17 uh, divided by, crap, 17's prime, uh, 17, or 18 divided by 9 plus 3, you know, just this mess. And then we're going to do the same thing for J. Um, and again, we're just, we're really just filling this with crap right now. So we'll say 1 plus 9 minus 6 plus 2 multiplied by 7 uh, divided by 4. I don't even know what that's going to come out to, but it's integer division, so it'll be a whole number. All right, so now let's say that I wanted to then take those two numbers and say int k equals i times j. And then Lastly, I want to do system.out.println and just simply print out k. Now, I honestly have no idea what it's going to come out to. 105. Cool. But let's say that's not the answer I was expecting, and I really think that something's wrong. How am I going to pin it down? Because, you know, this is right in my mind, and that's right in my mind. But I'm expecting a different answer. What we can do is we can come up here to debug, and sometimes you have to uh, return the cursor to the start of your program, and you can hit step into, and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of change the way your uh, the bottom part of your screen is displayed here, and you'll notice that we have variables set up right here. Um, we can ignore static and args, we're going to be getting into that later. But now, when we come down here, you're going to notice that input now is a value, after we've done that line. And every time, we're just hitting step over. So, okay, 
Now that we hit step over when it had this line selected, you'll notice that we have two variables, int i and int j. And they're both set to zero. That's their value, which is what we told them to do right here. So now we come to this line. This green line is where uh, our debugger has stopped. And so we don't really know what this equals. There will be times when we're actually assigning things uh, that are not arithmetic where, you know, we don't know what this equals. But if we're running a program, we might be able to, uh, to stop and find out this way. So we'll hit step over. And oh, i equals 15. Maybe I was expecting it to be 12 or something. But now I can actually see it right in front of me. After this line, i is 15. And why is that? And then I can go through and apply the, uh, the rules of arithmetic that we talked about a couple lessons ago to figure out why. And then we can do the same thing with uh, j, which I think should be 7. Yeah. So in this case, that then means int k is equal to, you know, 15 times 7, which is equal to 105. So now all of a sudden our, our program has done exactly what we've expected it to. And we can see all that using the step over, and when we get into um, to different functions, we'll be using step into as well to kind of examine how things work. But then it's just going to uh, print out what we want, and that'll come out here on the output. And oop, that's not what I wanted. And then we just run these last two lines. And the, if you notice, it says thread main stopped at. That's every single time that the compiler stopped for us so that we could either allow something or do something. And you'll notice that it skipped over all my commented code. Uh, so from 10 to 16, it didn't stop at all. It skipped from 9 straight to 17. And that's because, as I've said in the past, it does skip over um, commented code and blank lines. All right, well, now that I've shown you guys a little bit about debugging, a little bit about compiler uh, error messages and things of that nature, I want you guys to go play around a little bit explore you know different error messages that you can find goodness knows there's plenty of them uh, a good example of one is let's assume that I do this and I remove that line where I say what K is now if I toss K down here afterwards technically I haven't really done anything that wrong except when this hits the K it's clearly going to be an error and it will say cannot find symbol, symbol variable k. So that's just another example of different sort of error messages that you should familiarize yourself with. And there's going to be a lot of them to learn. And that's okay, because in due time, you're going to see them all, you'll get familiar, and you'll understand how to debug them all. All right, well, for now, that's it for me. I'm Damien, and it's been wonderful teaching everyone. If you have any questions about this, uh, please post them in the re uh, relevant CPP for Beginners thread. Um, don't feel like you're falling behind. This is definitely new territory for a lot of people, and I'm really happy that I can be teaching you guys. Have a good evening, and I'll see you next video where we're most likely going to be covering... Uh, I'm thinking that we might do a couple more problems before we move on to if statements. So we'll do that next lesson. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. See you around.